million of the European cinema, Lou Castell was born Ulf Quartzel in Bogota, Colombia, from a Swedish father and an Irish mother. He left South America to follow his studies in Jamaica, New York, Stockholm, the south of France, and by the early 60s, Italy. While studying acting and directing in Rome, Lou met Marco Bellocchio, who offered him his first screen appearance, the lead role in Fists in the Pocket. More than 50 films later, the Paris Cinematheque honored Lou Castell with a month-long retrospective of his films. This offered us the chance to speak with him about his works in the Italian westerns. Now, um, for this western you did a call a Requiem, a legend that uh, it was not directed entirely by Lizzani, that uh, Pasolini may have mm. shot some sequences. No. I don't no, I don't think so. With uh, request, there was another guy who wrote it, and it was an anarchist. So it's not really he shot the scenes. They were friends, were friends, and uh, and he just wanted to work in a western with his uh, actor and, and Franco Chitti, and uh, and uh, I myself. Uh, I didn't want to be an uh, anarchist because Pasolini even told me he's an anarchist. He's a Qualunquista. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he doesn't know what he's doing. And I said, no, he gradually understands and he, he knows what he's doing. And there's a comical ah. side in the, in the character of request. Yeah, yeah, he which, shoots by mistakes. Yeah, which Lizani uh, helped a lot in the technical. For instance, there was a hat that was uh, by accident blown off by the wind and in the in the cutting room he saw that it touched the frying pan so he made it come back again <laughs> I was trying to be a little bit of a chaplain or whatever you know one there was one scene I was I was sitting on the horse drunk it was a shooting scene where he was completely drunk and so afterwards he's sitting on the horse and I and I just got a clap on the on his head but I was sitting backwards <laughs> I made the gesture, you know, as if it, as if his head was there <laughs> instead of his uh, ass. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's it's things, you know, like that, trying to uh, go against the 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 boredom of the of the Western, because this is what I want to say too. It's very boring to make a Western. <laughs> really, very very boring. You have wooden pistols. You have pistols that don't work, uh, and you, you know. It's, uh, I was exercising before with wooden pistols, and uh, okay, that was before. But during too, it's very, very uh, heavy, very not at all exciting. But the little things that you add during, that's what, what I like. And in the rope scene, in the duel of the rope hanging scene, uh, when they shoot at the stools. Yeah, this is a great duel sequence. Yeah. Uh, I suggested this magical side, like uh, you see the objects moving on the desk, you don't know why. And uh, also, when they, when they pull out the guns at the same time. That was my idea! <laughs> no, I mean, ideas were very, were very, uh, accept they ex uh, Izani accepted very much. Uh, my ideas. Yeah, there's more. Uh, was that because Lizani was, was communist and was more sharing, or? Don't know. Uh, maybe he didn't care much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Finally, they take him to the hanging, another hanging, uh, uh, outside. Yeah, when he has a sort of fort. Uh, yeah, when he has a rope, and they're pulling him, like, in an Eisen, uh, like in a <laughs> uh, Eisenstein film, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so I suggested well, right there, just before you're talking to your boss, uh, G uh, give me a, uh, I don't know if it was me or him, 
he would give two knee, knee two uh, blows of the knee into my into my loins. You say that? Yeah. Le cool, yeah. Uh, balls. Yeah, <laughs> my balls, <laughs> loins, my balls. At the moment, the actor didn't quite realize because you know you say something like that and you get one actor, you want to do it, you know. And it's not written in the script or anything, so he just. He, but I thought it was it was it was natural that he would have be a bit, you know, rebellious. You know? Was it me or him? I don't remember if it was me or him. Okay, that's my memory of changes, <laughs> perception, uh, everything. <laughs> The question was boring, uh, like uh, in the contents. But still, uh, you know, if it's if he's revolutionary, there's a kind of gratification, so, you know, like, and also this ironical side of uh, pull pulling out the gun, you know, <laughs> in purpose and trying to do the thing and coming into the back into the uh, these yeah, little things. Because it's like, I should say, also ironical towards the the cowboy, uh, cult, the so-called cowboy cinema, American culture, you know, like. It's yeah. like it is exploding the myth of the the great gunman. Right. Mm. And Mark Damon, he was very good, even if he became a producer later on, he was very good in this this, this character. Ferguson. Yeah, he seemed like also a typical woman hater. Was that also mm. in the script? Or? That was in the script. Yeah, that was very elaborated, I remember. And I'm not going to really go into it. Ragazza, altri tre passi indietro. Did he, he speak Italian on, on, uh, on the film or was that shot in English? No, I think he did that in English. Yeah. Where did the uh, recreation was shot? In Around Italy? Rome. Mm, sand, uh, sand, uh, little sand mountains and so on. And there's the studios also. And uh, Clint Eastwood was also shooting at the same time. Oh. He was playing Flipper, I remember. And. Uh, and we'll win the game. You or Clint Eastwood? No, I didn't play with him. Mm. <laughs> I didn't play with him. For Matalo, um, did the director, Cesar Canevari, seem to be conscientiously making an artist surreal film rather than an ordinary Western? Well, I, I think I understood that uh, years after seeing uh, his film as a cult movie in Paris. I said, I said I got it all wrong. I accepted this third western. Interested, you? <laughs> what interested me was that he uses a boomerang instead of a gun, and said, "Wow, that's a, that's that's different. It's strange. That's anthropological. That's a K, another world. He's coming from another world, and so on." But. Um, in the film, he's not pretty much not there. Like there is. Yeah, you only appear in the second half of the movie. Also, because maybe an actor is kind of uh, self-conceited, maybe, and he wants to be more in the, in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spend most of your time being beaten in that movie. Was that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good expression. <laughs> I've spent most of my time being beaten. Very mazo, yeah. but I, I like this. I like this expression of being being very free in my being mazo, <laughs> uh, because uh, when I re 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 saw the film in Paris, uh, the scene where uh, where uh, I don't know what he does uh, to me when I when I I'm forward like this with my body and I just let my oh yeah I think it's slapping or. or, or and I just let myself go with my whole body, and 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 it's the time is uh, is ages, you know. <laughs> and all the time I'm swinging my body each time, you know. Uh, 
I think they're pushing me. I don't remember. Yeah, you're in the bar. Ah, they're pushing, they're pushing me. Yeah. The yeah, so when I saw that, I said, wow, it's like a dance. And I didn't know I was doing that, you know, <laughs> with my body, you know. And, um, but then I, well, I don't, I'm not repeating what I told you already. Yeah, but you know. the camera, camera doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah, and then I was pretty furious if, if it wasn't really make believe when they whip, whip me, not, not that they, they wanted them to whip me to death or, or, or that I should have red mar scars on my back, not just that I, that I feel the, the, the string or, or that, I, that I can react if it comes on my, my back, and so I can react. And I, I, I hated to pretend to react if I don't feel something on, on my back. So should we say about when I threw the boomerang? You need a boomerang. You <laughs> to you very well. No, it was very simple. It was this, always the last scene where, where I was supposed to kill him with the boomerang doing this movement. And uh, so I had the big one, the big one, the real one. And I aimed and I should, and I, I was supposed to aim towards the camera because it's normal. And I aimed, and with all my might, I threw it. Ah! And the director got it right into his stomach. Ah! And he looked at me. He said, son, you betrayed me. Me, director, your father. Oh, daddy, sorry. It wasn't my fault. But that's how it happened, you know, my unconscious did that, you know, the way I didn't do it on purpose. When I finally saw the film and the boomerang, how, how he showed the movement in, in the air and so on, uh, spinning, you know, with the camera spinning, and, you know. And then when he comes and hits the, the, uh, the other guy, and I accepted the film on that basis that the, that the boomerang turns around the corner. A bullet never turns around the corner. That was why I accepted the film. I forgot this detail. Because sometimes I accept the film, I'm not playing the big actor saying this, just, but sometimes I accept the, <laughs> accept the film just because of one scene, you know? And this, so finally when I see the film and I see the boomerang hitting him, it's, it's a little small, it's a small boomerang like this. It's not the big one I, I, I threw. And it hits him like, and it falls down, you know, like, uh, like, like, uh, wait, like, like this. I don't know, you know, like this. I mean, what, what force did it? I mean, it didn't kill him or anything. And he goes. <laughs> so he was playing his. Uh, now I understand better why, what he was doing. He was playing his ir irony, but he forgot the, the point of the, of the. Well, he forgot. I mean, I put another idea in the in the in the in the, thr in the boomerang in the in the idea of the boomerang <laughs> in the idea of the boomerang in a western. <laughs> Were you already a good um, horseman? Yeah, somehow. Um, I took some lessons, but I I, I already uh, rode when, uh, horses when I was around uh, five six years old because. In Colombia, not because of me, because my father insisted with, an, with the animals, in uh, tropical animals like monkeys, uh, monkeys uh, baby cockadrill, cockadrills, cockadrills, crocodiles, <laughs> and uh, horses. And, and one horse broke my uh, arm to cope with animals when you don't understand a thing about animals because you're a little boy. And it's a culture thing, I think, to understand animals. So you just can't talk about Tarzan and Jane and think that you, you're wild and so on. In another film, I was in a, on a horse, and it's called uh, Lucrezia Borgia. Uh -huh. And I went towards the, it was galloping towards the trees. And I didn't know how to, you know, because that's how I broke my arm when I was smaller, when I was around six. Because uh, the, the, uh, I wanted to uh, go like that, and uh, I thought it would go straight on, so I fell off, of course, and he stepped on my arm, even if he went afterwards, the horse went like this. 
I was crying, and the horse went as if he was excusing himself. But uh, uh, in the film, I was the same scene ha happened again. I was going towards the trees. I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, think about the horse that he would know. He would never go against the tree. And suddenly, I found myself on my on my legs, like this. I had lost conscious two seconds. I had fell right on my feet, right standing. And the, and the director was saying, you did that on purpose, didn't you? I said, no, not at all. I was shocked I was standing like, like you know, like, I just felt completely on my feet, you know. Because I couldn't uh, avoid, I, uh, how, you know, I wanted to avoid the tree, like, you know, <laughs> like this. <you> know. <laughs> So, uh, what was the question?